تدور أحداث فيلم هوتيل مومباي عام 2008 عندما يصل عشرة مسلحين من باكستان على متن قارب مطاطي إلى مدينة مومباي الهندية ويتفرقون في أماكن عامة حيث يطلقون النار عشوائيا فيسقطون العشرات من المدنيين قتلا إضافة إلى عناصر الشرطة الذين يحاولون التصدي لهم ثم يتسللون إلى أفخم فنادق المدينة التاج فيقتل عددا من ضيوفه ويحتجز الأجانب منهم ثم يعدمونهم عندما تصل القوات الهندية الخاصة بعد ثلاثة أيام في الظاهر يبدو هوتيل مومباي كفيلم تشويق وإثارة ترفيهي مثل أفلام الحركة الهوليوودية لكن في الواقع يحمل في طياته مضامين مهمة ورسائل إنسانية مؤثرة وذلك ما جذب المنتج الأمريكي المصري مايك جبراوي لصنعه that you almost can't translate it to film because it's unbelievable. Most terrorist attacks last seconds, but the attack on Mumbai was different. This is the inside story told by the people who found a way to survive. A couple of months before I saw the documentary, we met Anthony Maris, who's this young director from South Australia that had made a phenomenal short film. He's Greek. A movie about the Greek, the, the Cypriot War in the 70s, I believe. And I saw this short film that blew me away. And it was so similar in sensibility to the way we saw this documentary having potential. So we engaged Anthony. You are from Australia. Mm -hmm. And you're making a movie about a, a very Indian story. What attracted you to it? I was just to totally taken aback by the human side of, of what went down in the Mumbai attacks. A lot of people, myself included, had initially only really known of the attacks as a series of burning buildings on a television set of some explosions, some distraught faces, but you know, it was this idea that so many people from so many different cultures, classes, uh, religions, different socioeconomic backgrounds came together once this terrorist attack in Mumbai had happened and were really there for one another in order to survive. فعلا الفيلم يقدم العملية كهجوم على الإنسانية وليس على الهنود وحسب. شخصياته تضم شيف الفندق الهندي والنادل السيخي والنزلاء الأمريكي وزوجته المسلمة ورجل الأعمال الروسي والبريطانية والرحالة الأسترالي واليابانية لكن معظم هذه الشخصيات خيالية مركبة من شخصيات حقيقية How did you decide, okay, I'll take these guys, put them together in one character? There, were, there are some characters that remain intact. They are the Oberoi, the, who's the head chef, as well as the two police characters um, who go in. Their stories are so well known in India that it would be impossible to tell the collective story of the Taj without you know, showing what these individuals did. Oberoi also was quite famous in India prior to the attacks, so there was no avenue or option really to disguise who he was. But the other people throughout the hotel were by and large private people when they had checked in. Some of them made it, some of them didn't. And out of respect for their privacy, both of those who have made it, but also out of the, you know, for the families of the victims who didn't, we chose to amalgamate characters and actually disguise their biographical identities because we weren't just looking at telling one or another particular story, but trying to get a deeper truth at what these people collectively had to go through during these attacks. بدلاً من الهرب يبقى الشيف في الفندق ويحث موظفيه للانضمام إليه من أجل حماية النزلاء من موت محتم. نصفهم يضحون بحياتهم من أجل غيرهم. I heard of him, and once or twice I think we met because of me visiting the hotel. But once I got the role, I thought about it, that whether I should meet it, but I thought it was insensitive of me to ask him and tell me what happened and open his wounds. So I, based on it, whatever I saw and whatever human emotions under such circumstances will allow me to do that, plus the research that had come uh, with Anthony. I also knew people. Mm. When you see a situation like this happening for 72 hours, you can see the horror and you can feel the horror. أحد موظفيه النادي الأسيخي ورغم مخاطرته بنفسه لإنقاذ حياة العديد من النزلاء إلا أن سيدة بريطانية تتهمه بأنه إرهابي بسبب غطاء رأسه وذقنه Just as actors, you know, we've tried to make some of these storylines a bit more potent You know, for me in particular, I loved the script but my character I felt wasn't really saying anything 
So we, you know, I, I pitched the director an idea to make him a Sikh. Why Sikh, for instance? I, I read an article after September 11th of uh, the Sikh cab drivers being targeted, and brutally beaten up. I think one or two, unfortunately, died from, you know, racial prejudice and you know, the lack of culture in people and, and, and understanding. A nice thread we could weave in into this story. So yeah. is that that scene with the lady who suspects that you're one of the terrorists? Yeah, because there's it a young man. Was added there. Yeah, yeah. There's a young man in this hotel when guns are being drawn and everyone's in a panic with a big beard and a turban, and she thinks, as she says, he's one of them. Instead of getting angry, he shows her a picture of him, of his children, his wife. So that was a deliberate yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. To and it makes her understand people. that they're very similar, no, no matter what his appearance and his beliefs are. I'm just scared. We all are. This conflict between East and West, they had great meanings for people who come from the East because that what they encounter regularly in yeah. the West. And that's a key point that the film is trying to make. You mm -hmm. know, if you look at the Zara character, she's a modern Muslim woman, you know, who, you know, doesn't um, abide by the traditional stereotypical look at what most Western people would see a, a Muslim woman being. It's important to remember, yeah, that Muslims were victims, you know, and heroes of these attacks. One of the main things that wanted me to do the film was this story of this Muslim woman at prayer mm. who, in the power of her prayer and in, and in the strength and compassion and courage and peace that she found in her faith, was able to show the hypocrisy in the belief system of what the gunman had been indoctrinated with. زهرة التي تؤدي دورها الإيراني ننزيم بنيادي تنجو من الموت عندما تقرأ آيات قرآنية أمام المسلح فيتمرد على أوامر زعيمه ويرفض قتلها It wasn't complete imagination it was uh, you know for example my big prayer scene uh, is actually something that happened by your character so, so well, she was one of the on one of the people who was at the, well, the hotel that my character is based on my character is based on like an amalgamation of two different women and what that actually happened to one of them she was truly a muslim or she just knew no the she prayer. was muslim she knew the prayer i also play a muslim woman i mean it's, it depends on your def definition of if you're a practicing muslim or non practicing but nevertheless my my character maybe did pray five times times a day, um, but she is a Muslim woman. Um, and there are degrees of, you know, faith. You know, we can call ourselves of a religion and have varying degrees of faith. زوج زهرة الأمريكي الذي يجسده الممثل الأمريكي آرمي هامر كان أقل حظا حيث يقتل أمام أعينها بطلق ناري. So, Army, were you surprised by the reaction of the Indian authorities after September 11, the United States wiped out Afghanistan? India, although they knew it's in Pakistan, they didn't attack Pakistan. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why we decided to go. Well, actually, I know why we went into Afghanistan, and it really had nothing to do with 9-11. None of the perpetrators of the attacks were even from Afghanistan. Uh, that feels to me like it was about natural resources more than it was about a retaliation, um, especially considering that all the attackers were Saudi. But then, you know, violence begets violence. I don't know that holding the entirety of the Pakistani country responsible for the actions of, of a small group of extremists is the right course of action. Education is the way to combat things like this. I certainly don't think you need to model foreign policy after how the U.S. conducts itself in foreign policy or use that as a standard of, of how to handle yourself because given the last 150 years of U.S. foreign policy, I'm not sure that we really deserve that. فضلا عن مقتل سيخي بعد ضربات الحادي عشر سبتمبر في الولايات المتحدة قتل قبطي مصري في متجره ذلك الشخص كان ابن عم جبراوي After 9-11, I was driving down the 10 freeway and I remember a car which had this like stencil on the back and that was the environment, it was a very strange time and it said thou shalt not kill and then underneath it had an asterisk and it said accept Arabs and it was maybe two days or three days after September 11th that my cousin was killed his name was Adel Karas, and I remember thinking at that time, I'm like, oh, it's not that simple. And the world will never be the same, and there is going to now be this rift between the community. This so it's a very personal story, and I think you grow, and in Egypt there are attacks on churches. You can't isolate Egypt as being the only place these events happen, but those are the ones that are the, probably the closest to me because I have, still have a lot of family in Egypt. Shukran, uh, Merci, Mike. merci, get them. <laughs> We go down the back stairs and straight out the service exit. If they hurt us, we will not die. We take our chances. 174 person from DNAs and ethnicities different fell in the attacks on the Mumbai and the message of the film is that the attack on the human race is not a threat to them. 
وأقوى الأسلحة لمقاومته هي الحوار والتفاهم والتسامح واحترام الآخر حسام عاصي بي بي سي